and the Bamba said, you also create your own kingdom. So now the conflict went beyond Bamba and Bakonzo to the NRM. Now the Bakonzo said, oh, you government, you are now our enemy. Now this is the Mombere thing. That's how it began. Then so all of a sudden when there was a conflict, which I'm not saying NRM created it, there was a conflict between Bakonzo and Basongora. NRM jumped and supported the Basongora. Now the Kasese people said, oh, NRM is supporting our rivals here. Now it is also our enemy. I'm just giving you examples how it creates those, those challenges. Even here, the Buganda question. There was a rivalry, a conflict between the Buganda Kingdom and the Banyara, which I'm not saying was created by NRM, but immediately NRM bah, jumped and supported the Banyara. And that leads to a conflict. And it has been doing that. So when you do that, it nearly did it to the Munjoro when it supported another group that emerged along the lake and was also demanding to be independent. Bah, NRM was almost jumping on them. Now, the moment the government supports one of the rival factions, the other faction, which is not supported, looks at the government as enemy. And you know, have you read Scott, Scott, James Scott, The Weapon of the Week? Yes. You better read it. The Weapon of the Week. The Week will always use other methods other than the conventional ones because under conventional ones, they can't win. So they resort to terrorism. Those are the weapons of the weak. The weak have to devise means also. Yeah, in my language, in Ankara, they say, You see, when you are few and you are confronting a bigger enemy, what you do, you run in the banana plantation and start shaking the, 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 the sand. Pa, 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 pa. And the, the, the enemy will think you are also many, they will run away. <laughs> Those are the weapons of the weak. So if you the, 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 the weak perceive government to be supporting their enemy, this happens even globally. When the West supports one of the groups in the Middle East, the other one increases its terrorism. You get what I mean? When the West supports Israel, then the Hezbollah, Hamas, and whatever they say now, since for us, even Israel is stronger with, uh, than us. The West is stronger than us. So what do we do? Bah! We hit their buildings. Because those are the weapons of the weak. So that is how NRM complicated a situation. I'm not saying they originated it, but they complicated it by supporting one group against the other. In my opinion, what the government should do when it intervenes, get those people, if need be, give them scholarships. Give children the scholarships. Give them businesses. Give them whatever. But the moment you put them in intelligence, and people know that the intelligence, in the intelligence, I mean the other faction which remained, or which quarreled with you, once it knows that some of its, of its enemies are within intelligence, so you become a target as a government, plus the other people also become a target. Like this, I suspect, I'm not very sure, because he said some of the information, we are not private information. These Muslims who were assassinated, that was not terrorism, by the way. That was assassination. Because terrorism, you don't target the individuals that you know. You just do some, some harm in order to draw attention to yourself. I think they were assassinated. I suspect that the, the other group who assassinated them thought that they were recruited by government. And therefore, they are their enemies. I would say that the government resists from recruiting those people into its outfit, into ideologies of the movement. That, is, that creates more anger to the other people. You know, anger can be raised, and we, we are not saying necessarily anger is bad. There is transformative anger and negative anger. If you are angry against privileges, against oppression, against exploitation, in a manner that is not so violent, then that anger is justified. But you can create different angers and whatever. So when you are engaging, Professor Simwe did say that the government should engage politically, which I also support. But how do you engage? The nature of engagement is very critical. If you engage supporting one faction against the other, 
you know the results. You actually escalate rather than de-escalate. The moment the other group faction knows that behind your engagement, at times the government actually sends the other people whom they are against. Say, you go and contact us, those people. You think they will accept them? They will not accept them. Actually, it will it actually disturb them more that the people they disagreed with are the ones you are using. And it will escalate instead of de-escalating. You get what I mean? So the political, the, the, the political engagement which should be done, should be done sensitively. The colonialists, by the way, used to be smart. Whenever there was such a thing, like there was the Nyanjiri rebellion in Bunyoro, at the initial period, there was also uh, the, 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 the Muhumuza Nyabinji rebellion in uh, Kigezi, they would set up a commission of inquiry. Supposing you set up a commission of inquiry headed by Professor Sim, he would be perceived as neutral even by the other group. Then he comes up with a less biased report, then he uses that report to address the problem. In other words, where is the role of intellectuals in resolving the problem, like you? The role of intellectuals is very critical not just the politicians, because the politicians always are for power. They want to extract somebody there who will be their cadre, who will be their political mobilizer. And the other people who are opposed to them and you will not listen to you. You get what I mean by problematizing this uh, intervention by government? Yeah? So we have to do that one. But again, we have to involve the general population. In my opinion, the security operations should be a preserve of the security forces like him and the rest. That is operational issues. But causes, sources of conflict, we should all be involved. But our voices are never listened to. They are never. It should not be only the military uh, question. The issue of violence, the issue of insecurity is not exclusively a military question. And to be solved by the technical military people, it needs a civil and civilian intervention. We need to have civic intervention in security matters. And therefore, the national population, the general population, apart from intellectuals I pointed out, should be brought in. Other civil society organizations, the church, the mosque, the, uh, 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 the NGOs, the cultural associations, they should be involved. Not in the same operational issues, operational issues could be the preserve of the military, but the question of addressing the fundamental sources of conflict should involve all of us. There is nobody with a monopoly of knowledge, of understanding Uganda. There is no correct line. You remember the, the, the system of the correct line? Yeah. There is nobody who is, how do you know somebody is not patriotic? They, they, they select people that these are patriotic. Who is patriotic? <laughs> who is patriotic and who is not patriotic? Who decides who is patriotic? Some of those people seeing patriotism are the ones grabbing land. Isn't it? They are grabbing land. They are grabbing tenders. They are grabbing <laughs> jobs. They are grabbing scholarships. They are grabbing everything, and then you, you say those are the patriotic and they sing patriotism. The point I'm making here, however, is that all of us should be involved in our own capacity to resolve the, the fundamental questions, and we leave the operational issues to the taken by military people. That's how I'm problematizing these options of resolving the, 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 the issue. Finally, I would like to comment on understanding the question. I will go back to my mantra of need, greed, and greed. We have to understand the problem from those three angles and look at the different layers and see which layer is the most prominent and which one is less prominent, which one is dominant, which one is not dominant. The greed, the need, and the greed. And therefore, you tackle that angle. 
If there are those who are greedy, you can see how to address them. If you see there is greed, yeah, there is greed now. She's joining the answer. This is a greed question. But most of these Ugandans do not know the, 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 the doctrines. Let me tell you. Even the, the, the difference between Anglicans and Christians, I see this and other people and say, what is the difference between Anglicans and, the, and the Catholics? Doctrinal. Not just that one makes this sign and another one doesn't make it. That, that is the toughest thing in terms of doctrine. So I don't think Ugandans are like those people in the Middle East who are fighting for uh, against cultural erosion, values er erosion as such. These ones, it is mainly greed and need. So which layer is most important and how can the government now intervene to address that layer? Looking at historical injustices, it could be perceptions also and addressing the perceptions also, but as I finish, ladies and gentlemen, but the government must be seen to be neutral. The moment government is seen to be siding with one of the groups that are rivaling, you will not solve that problem. Because that will actually escalate it rather than de-escalating de it. Ladies and gentlemen, let me stop here and hear the views of the rest as we continue this discussion. But uh, once again, I want to thank Nkumba University for taking this initiative so that we discuss these ones. Instead of going to the bush, we go to the boardrooms and discuss these issues. We are tired of bloodshed. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mambusia. I am confident that everyone in the room is feeling it now. Is it getting cold or hotter? Um, or me, or maybe to me. Okay, um, uh, colleagues, on the, on, the, on the program, we should be going for a break, but let's hold it a bit longer. Let's uh, give an opportunity to Imam Kasozi, who is with us. And Imam Kasozi, before you came in, I just want you to be in the know of what Professor Solomon spoke about. Professor Solomon asked us to rethink what we have traditionally held as our beliefs about religion and politics, and how the two intertwine to contribute to either security and or insecurity. And on the question of ADF, as uh, now I call it what? Islamic Islamist. Um, that it has, uh, it has taken Islam as an ideology, which makes it a bit hard to fight because it is not a secular ideology and it is based on claims of marginalization, which Professor Mambusi has also hinted on. Uh, Professor Solomon also made mention of resource terrorism, where fighting groups take advantage of regions with resources and look out for resource proceeds in order for them to fight and work with other criminal groups. He also made mention of uh, what the uh, ADF consider as central to the struggle, and that is jihad through martyrdom in the form of uh, defending faith. And on the issue of the preparedness of the government in responding to the ADF and other groups, Professor Solomon made mention of uh, the multiple strategies that have been taken, including military and intelligence-led strategies, but also made mention of the need to move away from these traditional forms of security and look at other uh, forms in terms of addressing what actually contributes to the rise of terror and terrorism. So colleagues and those who are following us online, I want to take the opportunity now to invite uh, um, Imam Kasozi, and I need not mention what Professor has mentioned. But before I forget, uh, Professor Mamsia told us that uh, you and him are brothers from the same school, historically, and also from the same region, so we, district. So we want to see how related indeed you are when it comes to the academic circles. <laughs> You're most welcome. Uh,
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وصحابه ومن تبي سالم إلى يوم الدين First of all, I apologize. There is an extra message they sent to me. I did not read it, so I ended up in, in TV. And I was waiting to pick me in TV. They said, oh, you hope you went, did you go to TV? And indeed, I was in TV. So I had to drive fast to get in time. Uh, I have to listen to detail what he, Professor Sim has stated. But uh, in view of what I had, I must say, it will give me a clue and uh, the summary we have been given. Uh, for starters, my name is Imam Kasozi. Many other people ask me, what is your name? And I, told, I tell them, my name is Imam. Uh, okay, my name is Imam. I also do a job of Imam on a voluntary basis. So when you want to call me an imam of the mosque, you can call me Imam Imam Kasozi. But when I was born 63 years ago, my father named me Imam. I grew up as an Imam. Unfortunately, he, he didn't see me as an Imam. But at least my mother saw me. I want to recognize the presence of my, 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 my one of my friends, Dr. Tisuri, and my, my teacher. Every Thursday, he teaches me on Zoom, in trying to understand the Islamic sciences, especially uh, the Sharia, as it is used. Uh, if you want to know me more, uh, what is my job? I, I, my training, I am a demographer by training. Started as a sociologist and then ended as a demographer by training. My job, I am a commercial farmer, specializing in growing fruits, particularly pineapples. Now I am going to avocado, uh, purples, and uh, jackfruit. Because jackfruit and avocado are the new areas where people see the future in terms of those who want money. Uh, I also teach part-time at the university. And uh, people make it prominent, but that is my I, I teach because teaching is a hobby to me. Uh, the other thing is that, am I an academic like them? No. No. Because uh, uh, I chose not to become an academic much as I teach at a higher institution. That's why maybe I don't write, I don't whatever, but I follow and read. As he has pointed out, Mwebesa is my, is not just, is not just a, my OB, but at a given time, we are both the leaders of the former, the, the old students of Kitunga High School. People call it Montuera today because that's the new name, but for us, we know it as Kitunga High School. Uh, that, uh, that's, we went there at different times, but closer. I think I, I found him either living. Yes. So, uh, we, uh, then, yes. Do we come from the same district? I think we are born in the same district. Uh, but uh, we, no, we no longer come from the same district because I have migrated back at where I came from. <laughs> yes, where my parents came from, that's where I am now. Uh, so if you are tracing me, you may trace me in Mukono than tracing me in Rashamaire and rinsing where I was born. Uh, I still have attachments because I went through Kemsengu Primary School, Chitonga High School, even recently, I was on both schools uh, giving them water. Uh, I am sinking boreholes for them, but motorized boreholes, not the one pumped by hand. Uh, both, both schools, Chitunga and Kemshego. Uh, recently, I was there just last Thursday. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, some people probably, I don't know, because I did not hear people introduce themselves. Some, sometimes when I want to tackle this subject, there are some people I want to be present. But fortunately, since we are on Zoom and we are uh, live on Salam TV, Salam TV have put us, we are live on Salam TV, uh, we, we are live on social media, uh, 
these people may be watching. And I wanted them to watch, especially when we are tackling the issue of ADF in view of some of the views presented here. My question when I received this, I asked myself, because they said terrorism and Islam. I don't know how these two are related, because these are two different things altogether. One is peace, one is a dangerous scenario. And as a student of history, I remember I studied the reign of terror in France longer before even Islam came to this country. The reign of terror that was in France was there before Islam came here. Actually, about 30 years earlier. Number two, the question that was asked, is ADF Islamic? He has tried to differentiate Islamic from Islamists, and then finally you end up with the same thing. When you remove I and C, what do you remain with? Islam. Uh -huh. When you, you remove uh, Islamist, then you remove also I, S, and T. What do you remain with? So people disguise. They are talking about Islam and the Muslims, but they are trying to disguise it. And they want to appear as if they are positive. Because, you know, we are in an era of uh, a very, very different scenario because of COVID. It is abnormal. But in order to remain positive, we call it new normal. You want somebody to swallow quinine, you coat it with sugar so that it appears as if it is sweet, whatever you leave it with. So I asked myself, then he said, sustainable, uh, uh, how sustainable is Uganda's approach in dealing with the threat? I have about five questions to ask. Number one, what is Islamic about ADF? What is really Islamic about ADF? Just because at a given time, the leader was Jamil Mukuru, or Musa Baluku, as they are saying today. What about the others that, that are not Muslim and are in this uh, outfit? Okay. Number two, what makes people think that ADF is Islamic? You are here. Asim, who I don't know whoever designed this question. What, what makes you think that ADF is Islamic? Okay, uh, number three, we are talking about a threat. Which threat? Which threat now? Islam, terrorism, or ADF? Because all of the three, in some circles, all of them are threats. There are people who look at Islam and they are threatened. If you read this book, I don't know how many of you have read this book. If you read this book, Islam, Christian Missions, and the Colonial Administration in East Africa by Professor Sugairin, you will get very interesting things. And what did he do here? He did not write. He only went into the archives and picked documents that were written by Ugandans, by whatever, and just put them here. They are very, very, very interesting. And you can trace the issues that may be led to ADF for those people who think it is Islamic to be in existence. Next, the last question. What hasn't, what hasn't the other rebel out outfits been? Uh, why, 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 why are the other rebel outfits okay? Why are they being considered religious, okay? Despite the fact that their names, okay, we are very clear. They are quite clear. For example, road resistance. I mean, the word road used in the uh, in, in, in the Christian context, in, in most cases, it has something to do with religion. That's why even the bishops are called Lord Bishops. Okay? For us in Islam, Lord is only one. Rabb. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rabb. He's the Lord. The rest are not. Whether it's the Lord from England, according to what they call them, whatever, if you are knighted and you become a Lord, I uh, know. For us in Islam, we don't look at that way. Sometimes we find it very hard to address people whose titles are Lord. Lord Mayor, Lord to who? Lord Chief Justice, to who? That is for us is an, an exclusive usage. 
it is you, you exclusive usage is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rabbul Alameen. The Lord of the world is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the, those questions emerged. Then before I go to the literal thing I want, I want to say about this, I want to make a, a little reaction to what I have heard. Okay? And the investor did justice to this. He started, he, he left us to give us, I think people talk about the originality. But many people don't ask themselves. The source of information most people use, who are the originators? And why do they give it in that way? If you ask him, the professor of history, my OB, he will tell you, if you look at the formation of Uganda and how Mbemba uh, Musota was captured, eh? maybe killed or captured, and Musota means the snake. And you go to the formation of the house estates. Talk about the COVID also. It, it, there was also a snake preventing people from drawing water. It was also killed. Is it a coincidence? In history, he will tell you, those who win, okay, will write the story according to their percep perception. Those of you who have read, hey, I have seen somebody you have signed as UPDF. UPDF is an, uh, is an offshoot of NRA. Those of you who are in the bush, if you read about the NRA war, we have now about five writings. There are some documents by BSG. They were serialized in the Monta newspaper. Okay? We have a book by President Seveni. Even the edited version, whatever you want. Yeah, a book on uh, Seveni, uh, showing the mustard seed. We have a book by Captain Major, the retired Kazura John, betrayed by the leader. We have a book by the late General uh, Kutesa. Okay? Kutesa is saying how I saw it. Then we have a book by General, uh, this one man from, uh, who, who beat a police officer? Charlie Gonza. He also has, all, when you read all of them, they have a different views about the war, but they were fighting the same war. What is the difference? Everybody reports what he saw in the area where he fought from. And the rumors he heard from the others. Some are rumors, others are facts. Then, so, that is a bigger, a bigger question we need to look at. Then, greed, need, uh, need and greed. Those ones are used by very many people. The reason why people use creed, for example, because creed has something to do with the religion. This religion may be the traditional. Uh -huh. So that, the, or such ideology as he has put it. Why people want to use religion or ethnicity? Those, those according to sociologists, religion, which we call, you call well, faith, whatever you want to call it, and ethnicity are the two primary sources of pure security that people can rely upon. He's my first man. I get com comfortable with him. He is my religious mate. I get comfortable with him. Even when he's an enemy, you can reveal what you think because you think they will provide you. So when we have problems, we easily rush to these two institutions so that they give us cover. That's what I know as a student of sociology. So, uh, now, uh, uh, whether they organized the crime, whether whatever, uh, and I think what triggered, up, triggered, triggered off this, these discussions is because of the recent incursions, I think, in the Congo. People said, hey, let us see. In order to make them relevant, they had tried a, a solution, a sol a, something to use. And ADF, when you bring it, it becomes a very beautiful suit eh? you, to, to dress into. And you go to Congo and cover up, do whatever you want. Even some of the issues he's mentioning, like uh, uh, organized crime and then uh, 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 routing. Did you lose routing or there's another word we use it in history? Plundering. We use the thing plundering. You didn't. I, I had something like, okay, well, like that. So when people can use this, 
And Congo has accused Uganda of plundering when Uganda had gone to put peace in Congo before. The case goes on. The recently, uh, people said, ah, from 10 billion to 300 million, I think there was a joke. But still, even if it was one shilling, by the way, that you plundered it, it remains plundered. <laughs> where you are standing from. Then he said, uh, Islamists, not Islam. And this is a very interesting thing. Because uh, what is Islam? People they call Islamists are people who are, sometimes they are called fundamentalists because of putting in practice some Islamic practices. Look at me. Look at Kisui. Look at whoever. These, these, these ones. These ones from, I think, Somalia. These ones. When you look at them. At a given time, they have also, some people call them. Even me, I have been called an Islamist. But when they call me an Islamic fundamentalist, I accept reason because I put the fundamentals of Islam in practice. I will go for prayers. Ramadan is coming very fast. I pay zakah. I have gone for hajj. And I have said, Asharallah ilaha illallah wa anna Muhammad Rasulullah. Those are fundamentals of Islam. So when you call me a fundamentalist, basing on that, because I am rejoining the mosque, or I have grown a beard. Some of you have your beards. But mine is, is I am growing it because of Islamic purposes. Islam, it is good to have it. It is sunnah. So I try to do it that way. But if I find somebody without it, do I persecute him? No. Okay. So then in Uganda, we do not have Islamic sects. In Uganda, what is there is not even conflict among the Muslims. It is just disparity of who is the leader of the Muslim community. Therefore, it is wrong. So all Muslims in Uganda, apart from the Indians that have come in, including these Somalis who are here, from all of us, we are of the same school of thought called the Shafi school of thought. Mazhibu as Shafi. That's what we follow. We have other Mazahib of Ahmad bin Hanbar, of uh, Malik and others. But all of us move with this one and we are contented with it. That does not mean that we don't listen to the others. We look at them. So sects in Uganda, uh, some of the people you want to call sects maybe, uh, according to Islam again, we don't look at them as Muslims. They are Hamadiyya. Why? Because they say they have a new prophet. And uh, according to the Quran, prophethood ended with Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Okay, so the others, whether uh, these groups, whether you call it Salafi, whether you call it Tablighi, whether you call it uh, Orly people, whether whatever, all of them, when you go into the real practices, we do the same with just minor differences. And the problem in Uganda has been, it, it, it is really uh, disparity. Why I call disparity? To who is our leader? If you ask the Muslims in this house, you will have different leaders. One will be under the Amir, or Amir al Umma, or Amir Dawla. Another one will be under Mufti, another one will be under Supreme Mufti. But all of these profess the, the same, same, same thing. It is like if, when we are talking Christians, when we talk about Christian, Christianity, Christians in Uganda, it is just the difference between Catholicism, Protestantism, then this Namuana group, okay, is minor. That's why sometimes you will see them when they are carrying the cross, all of them come together. And then they go under UJCC, Uganda Joint Christian Council. But after the council, they go back and say, for us, we are Catholics. Even among the Catholics, those of you who are Catholic, you know. People in Rubaga are different from people in Nisandi. Some are white fathers, others are Nidhir fathers, others are Verona fathers, others are others, are, others, are, others. But when we look, very few people go deep to analyze that one. So even in, in the, but because the Muslim issue has become prominent and there is a historical injustice over it and the fear of this emanating from the time of colonialism, that's why people see us in a different perspective. 
Uh -huh. then, then you say a lot of intellectuals. It's unfortunate. We have remained intellectuals while reading the books. But in terms of influencing public opinion, we are threatened, and therefore, the majority of the civil society on the intellectual aspect or perspective is just sleeping. Why? Fear of our positions, or fear of promotion, or fear of the next meal. Uh -huh. So, what happened is therefore, you choose. Me who studied at Makere during the, time, the peak of real political arguments and the new Mamdan, when I look at Mamdan's writings today, and the Mamdan that was in Makere between 82 and 85 when I was a student there, completely two different people. My own professor, Professor Kabwejiri, he taught me for three years. First year, he taught me anthropology, social anthropology. Second year, social structure of East Africa. Third year, social, uh, 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 theoretical, uh, the theories uh, of sociological theory. He taught me all those. And he's the person I admired. He used to tell us African leaders commit the same mistakes. And one of the criteria he used that they stay longer in power. He came up to support a person who has stayed long in power, and I had the opportunity to meet him and ask him, Professor, what happened? He had no answer. Okay, so the intellectuals, we, they, we have, they have a problem because problem of survival. And that's why our role as intellectuals, university professors, lecturers, has been taken by people, callers on radio, Uganda Callers Association, people who dropped out in various primary schools and whatever, but they, they are very prominent than us. They have even organized themselves into an organization. And sometimes even all the political players go to them, pay them money behind so that they go to abuse others. Then for us, we call it ourselves. Those of us who are still talking, then people wonder, they even fear for you. You man, are you safe? But when you are a Muslim like me, you say I am safe. Why? There is nothing that will happen to me which Allah has not decided. The Quran says, Ma yusibana illa ma kataba Allahu lana. Le huwa maulana wa ala Allah faliyatawakala al-mu'minun. There is nothing that will happen to you except what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has destined for you. Why? He is our provider, he is our protector. Huwa maulana. Maula means a lot. Then the verse ends, wa ala Allah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the believers must rely on. Today, some believers don't rely on the Almighty. They are relying on the political figures, political figures. They fear you as if you are God. We are very few who remain in you who don't fear you. You say to the poor So that is the bigger problem, my, my, my colleague in the Vesa. Then the role of civil society. The civil societies are in danger themselves. I was, yeah, this today's newspaper, you hear this. Government slaps tighter rules on NGOs. And they say, in a bid to regulate the operations of non government organizations, the government has issued fresh regulations. Specifically, NGOs are concerned, specifically, NGOs are concerned about the regulations requiring them to get clearance before getting some services. Just registering a SIM card in the name of a civil society organization or an NGO, it is almost now impossible. Reason? Because these NGOs are looked at as a problem. So the role we are talking about, they cannot pray it because they have been threatened. Okay? They can't receive funding, they cannot whatever. Now, to operate in a district, even if you are taking water to them, they say you must have an, uh, a, 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 a memorandum of understanding with the district. Okay? Imagine going to Rensinger where I was born, where the water, water source, which was a swamp, has dried up because of degradation. If I want to sink there a borehole, they want me to come to Tungamu and sign a memorandum of understanding, not only with the car. RDC, Chamanero C5, TCDUI, Hereth, whatever. 
All of them must sign on that document. If I don't have it, they may say, don't do it here. But people, because they are in need, they just accept you, you go and do it and run away. But they might, they, if they are chasing you, they can follow you on that and ask you, where, 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 is, that, where is the argument that made you go and operate in Ibulisa or in Kitugum or whatever? So the NGOs also have a problem. Uh, they, they, they may fail uh, to do this because they have turned into, into enemies. Uh, the other comments I will be just when I am winding up. So in my conclusion, which is the beginning of my talk, number one, Uh, okay. <laughs> Number one, I will just go through quickly, quickly. We cannot discuss ADF in isolation. Fortunately, he has helped me. Uh, my information about ADF, I don't copy it from anybody who has written. Because I read and either be dismissed, I, I, I copy it from myself. Now the question is, are you ADF or no? I am a Muslim leader who is concerned with Muslim community. And because ADF, when it became a rebel, and therefore is being chased, it leaves behind the widows, it leaves behind orphans, OK? And me as a leader, this boy will come to me for, for helping me. For example, I am paying tuition for over 300 orphans. Some of them may be ADF orphans. One of them who came and picked food from my home, because somebody gave me food to give to orphans. And I called this woman who had eight orphans from Wakiso. She picked the food. I don't know who saw her. She was asked by the security where she reports regularly that what had you going to do to Imam Kasozi's home? She did not come to my home. She came to my office as an imam. But she was asked that question. So when you go deep to see what these people we are discussing, those could be the causes of the problem. If somebody now gets insecure like that and has these orphans and they cannot find, and some of these orphans are old enough, if somebody is recruiting them, will they really remain there? So that's why he said some of the methods, or they said some of the methods and tactics that people are using to curb this are not sustainable. And they would be helpers. We are also perceived as enemies. And it's a bigger, bigger problem. So that's why I'm asking. Uh, so the establishment in Uganda, meaning the government, uh, uh, recycles ADF narrative with some international geopolitical inclinations. That's why today, it is, ADF is no longer, uh, it has no longer, ha it no, does not have only one council, since they call it Islamic, let me put it in an Islamic tunic, a council like this one, they have several ones. At one point, they will become ISIS. Another point, they will become Al-Shabaab. At another point, they will call them uh, the, 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 the older one the parent organization of terrorism according to, to the West for the Muslims, Al-Qaeda, okay? And many of you intellectuals, you even don't ask yourselves, how did Al-Qaeda come into the existence? Who is this Osama bin Laden? Yeah, you, you don't go beyond the curtain to read the new other sources other than those provided by the West. If you ask Dr. Kisure, who was in Saudi Arabia as a student then, when Osama bin Laden was recruited, he will tell you, Osama bin Laden at that time, he was a postgraduate student at the University, King, King I think, of the University in Jeddah, doing a master's degree in MBO, M, M, MBA, because originally he's an engineer. And his family's company, the bin Laden company, was the biggest, I think, construction company in Saudi Arabia. He, he sacrificed that, and they recruited him, the Americans, took him to Afghanistan to organize the jihad, what is they are now calling about here, jihad is there, which led to the collapse of the Soviet Union. When they collapsed, he, had, he looked at all the loopholes, and then he said, we can manage this. Then he established his, his organization called Al-Qaeda, meaning our base, our system, the systematic way of doing things. Then the West called it a terrorist group. Many people don't ask themselves like that. So equally, ADF, if you look, 
Jamil Mukuru is in custody, seven years. Why don't they try him? Because they have him. Why don't they try him? The reason why they have a problem in trying him is because the charges that enabled him to be extradited to Uganda are not what Ugandans, the Ugandan government want to put on them. But now, in view of the extradited treaty they used, they will have a problem. Therefore, they choose keep him incarcerated. The good thing we have him. Does that one help the situation? Answer is no. Because actually, it increases people to think that there is injustice here. Okay? So, seven years in Ruzira here. Not tried. Okay? So, we have a problem. Uh, then, because, and the problem is because of geo political inclination of the whole issue of terrorism uh, and also how they view Islam. The world was thrown in a very complicated drive when Islam was, co co when some Muslims were conscript conscripted by both its haters or enemies uh, and its own members who use it to achieve personal goals. So when somebody uses your faith or your wife, do you call it that? The answer is no. Then there is a trend being perpetuated by mostly the so-called international community that Muslims are the actual danger towards world peace. And that's why it is very easy. Talk about Al-Shabaab, talk about whatever, talk about... The others you don't. People talk about them very slightly. We have a vivid example of terror in this region. The 1974 war in, in Rwanda. The massacres is there. Okay? You know what happened? Those of us who are far away from Rwanda, we, me, where I stay, you know, I stay on the border between uh, the border of, Rwanda, of Kenya, Tanzania, and, uh, 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 and Uganda, in, in Gaba there, eh? in Umunyonyo. We saw bodies from Rwanda, some of them, up to, to, up to Gaba here. Now, where was Islam about that? And some people don't mention it because they have written, for example, that all people who run into mosques were protected, irrespective of meeting the Hutu or a Tusi. But very few people, the, the, such information cannot come out. Why? Because the West has designed Islam as the actual enemy. And in order to do that, what, what has happened? Uh, the, there is a trend being perpetuated by most of the, the so-called, I have mentioned that one. Now, what have they done? The, these people, in their agenda, they have, been, they have crafted okay, a highly sophisticated uh, global system uh, by the global powers, and they are employing it. They have employed very senior people as spiners. Eh? Spiners. They will get a small information, say a lot about it, and then everybody who does not bother to find the, to, to, to make his eyes through that opaque thing to see what is going on in the corridor, uh, corridor there, accept that, oh, this is spam. But if you interrogated some of the writings about ADF, you will, you will wonder. And why ADF becomes a real threat? When, when you, you want to argue like I'm urging, they present the Chichwamba case. But the question is, was the Chichwamba case really ADF? Why is it that it has some similarities with certain things that happened in the Royal Triangle and other things that happened in, in Teso and others that occurred in Northern Uganda. You see, when you go for all those three I have mentioned, I have mentioned, versus, okay, versus UNRA, it was NRA. Versus ADF, it is NRA. Versus UPA, it is NRA. Versus Road is this It is in RA. There is a one common factor on the other side. We have different ones. But the happenings are the same. In my religion, the prophet told us that those people who will live longer will receive very surprising things. They will see a lot of things. And we, that's what we are waiting for. This when they wish us after the exit of NRM regime. And we begin to which they are compiling, which they are, have had him talk about many things. I don't think he doesn't have capacity to write them. That when he writes them, what will happen? The, he has used the Kakwenza, Kakwenza's thing as an example. Okay, so 
So the, these people, uh, they have employed numerous spiners to disseminate the deceptive narrative using the media, okay? And due uh, to their connections and influence, it is spreading like uh, wildfire. And that's why we have such a thing as ADF is done. Unfortunately, academics may also become a victim. However, that has not stopped. Despite all this, this, this drama, kamafara, whatever, Islam is growing very rapidly. When the U.S. deployed in Iraq to fight against Saddam Hussein, about 20% of the soldiers they took in Iraq came when they were Muslims. After 9-11, many people embraced Islam through reading because people, information people did not know about Islam emerged, and many of them are embracing Islam. In conclusion, because I have one minute left, locally, where is the problem? Some elements in ADF, those who are Muslim, they felt insecure because of the situation that he emerged. And he has mentioned it. Government siding with a group. Dr. Kisude here, through his organization, the World Muslim League, they organized a meeting for Uganda Muslim Supreme Council, members of the General Assembly, where I was privileged to be a member. And we are taken into Mbarara. And the team had been organized, the mediators, by the president. Listen to their names. Very prominent Ugandan. Professor John Wilson Kanyama was the chair. He presented a 31-page document, which I have. Very interesting. And out of anger, when he was frustrated, he wrote a book. I was privileged to read the manuscript of his book. I know before he published it. It is there. Number two, Ambassador Raphael Ochan. You know him, he was a PSC and ambassador, Raphael Chan. Captain Gertrude Ndjuba, engineer Katama, I don't recall his other name. I think he died recently, engineer Katama. He's a Mtiga man. And Hajat Anuna. The only Muslim on that committee was Hajat Anuna. The rest, and then they convinced us that if you drop the two leaders, things will be okay. We dropped both of them. And I was at war with Jesuri because to convince me to accept to drop my leader then. We were at war. I told him, Jesuri, Dr. Jesuri, this is not possible. I'm seven is not telling you the truth. And it came out that he did not tell the truth. We dropped the two leaders, had one when we came. Those of you who are old enough, you know what happened in Koro on independence celebrations. When two Muslim leaders, we were invited both on the occasion, and there was somebody, Kakokola, somebody to, to say prayers, somebody hit the other because he wanted to take the opportunity. Embarrassment of the Muslim community. So when people see this, then that's why the origins of what they call ADF, who were about their Islamic activities, began from there. Because all of them were based in Nakasero. We, we are told we are going to share in the leader at Sawaya Queen. The then Minister of Internal Affairs, the late Chisu, Samson Seka, made a very big document and they read it. In Uganda, they said, Abantu Mwena, Abana Kungana, Okulaiza Mufuti, Kusawe Akwini, Tuja Kubabu Niseni Wabu. That whoever we gather to share in the new, we shall take Himunga Kakaba. When people said, Oh, Okukaba, then people went and took over what he was talking about. Supreme Council. What happened, you know, history. Police officer may know. They lost four police officers, and I think three dogs in that encounter, and two Muslims that were there. Those are the records. But this will not read anyone. That's why me, as a person who is there, I follow them and I know. So from then, these people were taken to prison. When they were taken to prison, 400 of them arrested and taken to prison. Kazini, at that time, was the commander of the military intelligence. He came there. They arrested all of them. They took them to prison. They released 
385 and remained with 15. The 15 that they remained with are, it is the seed that brought out what you call ABF today. All that Muslim group went allied with Nauru to become allied democratic what? forces. One of them was Jamil Mukuru. But how did they? Something which you must investigate. In prison, they find the man called Ruzze. Ruzze. Ruz Joseph Ruzze. Joseph Ruzze was the, of the Chirimutu group. Chirimutu group. It was a rebel group. Of, they were forming an opposition thing about him seven. They had been arrested and put in prison. Okay? With the late Evaristo Nyanzi, eh? that team. So they found him there. Then Ruzze, he had found, he was trying to fight government. He did not have people. Now he got opportunity to see 400 people, and then when he remained with this, he convinced them. When they came out, they went to their place in Buseruka. And from Buseruka, they ended up in Congo. But every day, they use, now they use them. When a Muslim clerk is killed, we are told ADF. When whatever happens, we are told ADF. Let me tell you. At a given time, ADF held territory in Uganda, in the Renzoi area, up to Ibanda. Up to Ibanda. Who Muslim cleric did they kill? But in 20 years later, about maybe 20, 20 years later, or 10, about 15 years later, in 2012, we are told that they are the ones who killed Abu Karimu, they killed Bahiga, they killed Chiria, they killed Muayi, they killed uh, and others. If you ask his department, you are the investigators. Where is, where is the credible information that leads to this? Absolutely not. Where is even one single report about any of this? They killed Kagezi, now they, they are the ones who killed Chirumira. Chirumira was fighting with the police itself. The leadership of Kirumira, you know him. They, they killed Abiriga. All of these are attributed to what? To ADF. It is a pure lie intended to convince you that ADF is a threat. The ADF that is in Congo is no longer active, according to my source. They became civilians like the Rwandese who came from Rwanda during those days and they came to Uganda and settled. These people have been settled, they are settled in Congo, they are given a big chunk of area, that's where they are living normal life, that's where they call it, they say, it is a, they, as they call it an Islamic state, that's where the only thing, that when you are there, it is Islamic rules that what? You can go there, and that's the, that's the real issue. But here, because they, they, ever since we went, how many months? Operation Shuja. How many months now? About three. We are coming to almost what? Three months. Tell us, show us any engagement that has been there, a real fighting between ADF and the Ugandan forces. Uh, nothing. Even when they took over an airport, it was a bush. And they said, this is the airport. That's, okay. So it is unfortunate. The emerging information now is saying some UN agencies and some big people were using these people because they settled down in order to get this, this, this what? These, these minerals you are talking about, all resources from Congo, only. For other reasons, we are now there. I don't want to venture deep into that, but I want to say there are If we want, uh, uh, so somehow, if you, know, if you read a lot, and you see what colonialism did to Muslims, he mentioned it, education marginalization. You see, in 1956, the colonial government gave out education funds, money. And it was, uh, they gave out, I think, 136,000 pounds to develop education. The Muslim community was given 213 pounds, 213, out of 136. What percentage is that? At that time, we had more than 50 schools. Now, when you, each school was supposed to get four, four, four pounds. So that is, those are issues many people don't mention. And the, so when you get people who have decided to become militant, uh, oh, uh, and they can use it as an opportunity to give them a good cover. So 
how do we? So Muslim, look what happened in 79. Where we come from, he knows. In Shema. We, we now have a mass grave in Nyamtanga. People killed just because they were Muslims. What he called a reverse. Okay. Did, 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 I mean, favor Muslims only? No. During the economic war, I think non-Muslims got much more than the Muslims. I will tell you for a fact, and he knows it. Before the economic war, Mbarara town, Mbarara town, the one you know, there were over 10 Muslims with the structures and buildings, and they were rich. Asmani Matovu, Abdu Kakule, Mbiringi, Swaimani Mkasa, eh, Jafari Mkasa, eh, Jafari Sentamu, eh, and eh, Sadi Kizito, eh, Insamba. All of these, these men were rich. And there were only two Christians with buildings on their own. The late Baryam Jura and somebody else I have forgotten. But after the economic war, people like John Sheka and many others came and picked because they were given. But people, people don't consider that. They always look at Idi Amin from an angle where he is protecting the Muslims. It is unfortunate. So the problem, look, during the war, NRA war, it is only the Muslims that were invaded in a mosque on Idi Day, and six of them were killed in Ulubu Tambala. Here. Ulubu Tambala here. Very little is said about it. But over this, tell us, no church, no whatever. You see, so the problem, as long as the local problems remain unresolved, we shall have people who may not think faster go into this. I am one of the people who are opposed to war and in terms of insurgencies or rebellion in the form the Museven took it. One important thing, because Museven succeeded with it because the people, civilians, wanted it. After Museven, Ugandan civilians will never accept anybody to organize a rebellion in their area. Why? After the war, they received the Yagi Answa. The way of triangle, that's where he's born. I, I was in the village recently, Katoke. Deep, deep in the cassette. When you pass there, you will know. So people who were rich, they were whatever, now they cannot allow. What have they benefited? Salim Saleh to go there and take a whole villages, eh? villages and villages in a place called Namunkekera, and he's there now, they say, an industrial park. When you go there, and you, if you want to find Ugandans in this industrial park, you may not find them. Is it because you are up one? No. It is because the yardstick used to get there, they may not get because of very clear reasons I don't want to mention here because I, I, I may make some of you run out of this room. Nasty. So, uh, such a people will then claim uh, they, they go, you, you call them radical, radicals, you call them, you call them other names, and they move on. Lastly. Perpetual injustice is the problem, okay? We are denied space, we, we, then we are talking sustainability means. What does sustainability mean? The only way, if we want to get sustainable solution other than the force they are using, is to bring back a justice and fair to the Muslim. And to address some of the issues they are talking about, even affirmative action, which was a big song by the NRA as they came in, the Muslims have never been beneficiaries of this thing. This, of this, uh, of this, this, this uh, affirmative action. Do you want it? My answer is no. Because for us in Islam, we are supposed to work for ourselves. What do we need? A conducive environment to let us work. I sometimes make people funny that if I work the way I'm working, okay, I will also be able to stay in Kololo and buy a Prado. But because of nepotism and other factors, I cannot buy a Prado, I cannot go to Kololo, I will always find a small place where to live in. So that is the biggest challenge. So if we want to address this, sir, talk about that. Therefore, this problem of international uh, agency and their ideology, okay, terrorism against Islam, fundamentalism, jihad, all these are coined 
to make it uh, acceptable, but they will not, they will not, they will not, they will not happen. And then those who think that by using these terms, oh, fighting Muslims, they will eliminate Islam, they are just joking. Oh, why? The owner of Islam has said this. That is my final word. That we are the ones who reveal this, this message of Islam and we are the protectors. That's why the more we get threatened, the more recruits we get in terms of faith and belief. And the more commitment, committed Muslims become. And the moment they become committed, the better for us as, as a community or those who want to see. Therefore, the crash of civilization, Huntington, I don't know how many of you have read Huntington's book, The Clash of... Or, uh, Good Muslim, Bad Muslim, by Mamdani. Or, Darul Harb, Wadar, Darul Salam, by Professor al -Mazrui. I don't know how many people have read that book. Darul Harb means uh, the, 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 the state of war, and Darul Salam, the state of peace. Mazuri has written a big book about that. We read this. Finally, you can... How many people have read this book or have seen it? President Hidi Amin, a narrative of his rule. It is advertised every Sunday in the, in the New Vision newspaper. But people will not buy it because they say it is expensive. Buy it. It is 100,000. It is by uh, uh, Muonge Charles William. He, he, he has a column in New Vision. And they are every week, every Sunday, they, ad they advertise it. Even tomorrow they will advertise it. This one. The 100,000. The others who want to understand Islam in Uganda properly, this was launched yesterday. We have worked, done research, and compiled this book about the history of Islam, starting to where it came from in Oman, because largely the Islam we have here came from Oman. So the Sultanate of Oman, the Sultanate of Zanzibar, and the Kingdom of Uganda that received them and other areas, it is here. It is also 100,000. If you want it in Uganda, you will have it. If you not read Arabic, also have a version in Arabic. This one. It has a detail of some of, some of the things you are talking about inside here. All the, the, what you call ADF, the various groups, all of them are here. If you open it, you see all the pictures of the Jamiru Mukus, the Kamogas, the Mubajes, the, the Sliman, all, 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 from the time of Nuhu Karima. They are all here. So you have the opportunity to buy. But I know you, you as academicians, you can. But many people will want, because they, they, they don't know how to read. After all, they say, how many pages? 600. This is a 660 page book. Very few people, these ones are the ones who read it. The majority of you, if you, if you are not in an academic circle, you cannot read this. So I want to thank those who gave me the opportunity uh, to be here, and uh, many things have not been touched, but you are free to contact me. And uh, as I told you the other time, during such a, in, a discussions, let us have many more people from the security, not these police officers, ISO, ESO, CMI, let them be here. And we exchange with them frankly. Then we shall help our country to get where we want. But if you keep intimidating people, and they decide to go underground, then you are in trouble. You are not safe. Thank you very much. Let me show my way.